Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and there is a saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we're going to illustrate that point today with the Godot game engine. Now what I'm going to do is, in my humble opinion, make Godot look as good as possible and we're going to use something called the Godot Minimal Theme of which version 2 was recently released. But first a little trip down memory lane. What you're seeing in front of you, this is Godot 1.1. And this is how things looked when they began. Notice no menu bars, uh, it's kind of a, a weird tabbing system here, but you can see the genesis of where Godot came from. Now, funny th enough, look at the theme and the theme coloring. And as we go through verses, you're gonna notice uh, we kind of change from this gray to a, a blue, and then kind of go back to the gray again. So now we are here, and this is Godot 2. You can see a bit of an evolution of things going on, still no proper menus. Uh, your tabs are a little weirdly located over here instead of in the central system that you've seen. Uh, your alignment of uh, tools and such are a little weird. Your customization is definitely not there, but you can see the evolution of how things went. And then we moved on to Godot 3. This is what I like to call the blue era. Now, one of the things about Godot is it actually, Godot 3, out of the box, was the least friendly on um, high uh, DPI monitors here. Uh, there are settings to change this, but you're going to notice everything got really tiny. That is definitely uh, an out-of-the-box Godot 3 thing. I think it's just part of how they changed the way things worked. Uh, again, you can see a bit of an evolution of how things work up here. Uh, we now have the centralized icons over here, and you notice we've entered the blue phase. And now we're moving on to the newest version of Godot, at least as of the time of this video. And the funny thing is, again, the coloring out of the box, what you're seeing here with modern Godot uh, versus the original version. I imagine if you took this color and this color and you combine them, you end up here. I never really noticed that the evolution of how things went. So this is Godot uh, 4.4 Dev 6. So as of the time of this video, this is the most current release. And you can definitely see an evolution of how things work. So now what we're going to do is take a look at Passive Star's minimal theme. I covered this one in the past, but he's actually created a version 2.0 of it. And this has several new features. So we're going to go ahead and load that in. I'll show you how to do that. To do this, go to Editor, Editor Settings. And then here, what you're going to find is Interface, Theme. And your setting is right not here, because what you got to do is turn on the advanced settings. Turn the advanced settings on like so, and now you've got the ability to provide a custom theme. I'll show you exactly where this theme came from in just a second, but uh, you can grab it there. So basically, once you've downloaded it, it is a T-Res. It is available uh, in my downloads folder, so that is here. I do wish they would use the native file system so that I could actually jump to my downloads easily enough, but baby steps, baby steps. All right, here we go. Downloads, minimal theme, T-Res. Now, one of those things that you found in the past is there were actually two versions of this, one for high DPI monitors and one for standard DPI monitors. Now with the new version, uh, it's got uh, better customization and the ability to actually specify that. So here you can see the new theme. And it hasn't changed a whole lot, but what they do is they space out how everything, the text is more spaced out, but you've also got customizability uh, features that you didn't have before. So we'll come back to the theme in just a second. We'll go through the overview of it right now. So here we are. This is it. This is the Godot Minimal Theme version 2.0. So this is Pastor Star's blog about this release, and you can see what it is capable of. Now, one of the things is, so it had a complete rewrite, it is dynamically generated like their own built-in theme. It supports editor settings and fixing some issues that couldn't be fixed before. So what does it do? It removes excess white space UI decorations and add white space where it helps with readability. So you can see old, new. So they've just kind of spaced things out a little bit better where it makes sense. Uh, and I think honestly, it's just, it, it's a minor thing, uh, but I just think that this version looks better. Especially when you look at like the icons here, look all cluttered up, nicely spaced out. Uh, so uh, you can see various different white space problems that it had there. Now they had the problem of 1.0, the original release of it. Well, there were originally two versions of it because uh, if you wanted to do HDPI, there were uh, multiple different variations. And if they wanted to do a light theme, well, you had to do a different variation of that as well. Those have all been solved. So now that we've got this new version of it. It does have a light, a light theme for those of you that like burning out your corneas. Uh, and this is all based off of a, a blog by Yuri Saizov, who used to be one of the Godot uh, core members. Uh, he uh, did this option of using a built-in script for the theme resources. It's gonna combine the regular and um, high DPI themes into one. 
So he suggested to embed two uh, theme chunks into a single resource and merge them together using theme.merge with, depending on the selected editor settings. So they kind of worked on it. Uh, in doing so, it actually shrank the theme down by 1.3 thousand lines of code. So give an idea, it doesn't look like it does a whole lot, but there's 1.3 thousand lines of code that were removed from the theme. So the theme is pretty in depth in terms of what it does. Here you can see the technicality of how it actually works. Um, and then you've got here in terms of uh, different color settings of it. And uh, there is a light theme option uh, uh, support in there as well. Uh, so it works and it's usable. Uh, and the, the big thing here is you've actually got um, configuration settings of these. So basically, this was based off of this article here from Yuri that kind of walk through making a customizable version of it. And by the way, if you want to go ahead and grab this yourself, you can grab it from GitHub uh, over here. Again, you can see some examples of it in action. Uh, so there are your install settings. And here is what he actually recommends in terms of uh, doing his settings. So let's go ahead and we will do that. So let's find which one is the Godot 4 version right here. All right, so let's set it up to look exactly like what he suggests. So, you know, editor, editor settings like so so interface um, and then theme right here uh, and here's where it's got now exposed variables we can set so we can come in here base color we will set that to uh, 252525 like so uh, and then accent color the nice thing here is it is uh, not requiring a reload to switch these things so accent color we're going to switch that out to 569 EFF Contrast set to 0 0.3, which is what it is. Icon saturation is set to 2. And corner radius is set to 5. But the one thing that you're going to notice here is you do have these theme settings that you could now configure for how things will ultimately work. And he also changes out the main font to this particular version. And done. So here you can see this is peak Godot look. And I honestly think it does. I think this looks uh, about as good as Godot can right now. It's little things, definitely, uh, in terms of spacing and, and the way things ultimately look, but it is a step forward. And again, the cool thing here is, once again, we do now have these configurations about the theme, things that you can do. Uh, so you've got a variety of different options and configurations that you can make with it. He can expose variables out to it. And again, if you want to read more about the technical details of this new font version or style version 2.0, I will have all of the relevant links in the linked article down below. So again, beauty is very much in the eye of the beholder, but here we go. Godot 1.1, Godot 2, Godot 3, and then here we go, Godot 4.4 Dev 6 with the Passive Star Godot Minimal Theme. And you'll see when I use Godot on my channel, it's going to look like this nine times out of 10 because honestly, I think this looks about as good as it gets. By the way, if you wanna go ahead, just get rid of these things globally, uh, what you'll find, at least on Windows, just go in here to uh, App Data, like so. Uh, and then you're gonna find there is a Godot folder. So once you've installed it, it installs in here. So your theme will be in here. Uh, so if you want to get rid of it, uh, that's editor themes. So your themes will all be installed here. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, delete your settings from here uh, and then it will go away. So basically, if you really want, just delete this folder completely and you will be back to stock. I've never used Godot a day in my life settings and you can go from there. So if you want to reset back, that is how you can do it. Of course, you can also reset it in the editor settings as well. But if you want to go back to like pristine version uh, Godot, so what you'll find is if you reinstall Godot, uh, you're going to get this theme by default because it is a global setting. So that's why you want to know that that is there. So ladies and gentlemen, that in my humble opinion is how you make Godot 4.4 look prettier. But again, like I said, in the eye of the beholder, let me know what you think, which one you prefer. Have you checked out his theme? Are you interested in that new light mode theme? Because you're weird. Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.